Hello everyone, hello, hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me for In the Word on Wednesdays. This is Wednesdays in the Word. Happy New Year to everyone. If this is the first time that you are joining me, I'm so happy that you are here with me today. I hope you are having an awesome, awesome day so far. It is Wednesdays, folks. It is Wednesday. It is our first hump day of the new year, and I hope that everyone is faring well. Thank you so much for joining me for this very special day. Why is it special? Because it's a new year. Why is it special? Because we made the wake up list, everyone. We are a part of the new year. And my, 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 what does the Lord have planned for us this year? We are going to find out. We are going to work it out. We are going to walk in our purpose and we are going to make it happen. If this is the first time that you are visiting on one of my scopes, welcome, 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 welcome to the community. Welcome to my scopes. Now, I only have one rule and that is is that we respect and love everyone. We do not say vicious, vile things to each other. Hey, hey, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me today. That's my only rule is that we respect everyone and that there are positive vibes and love in this room as a part of this community. So if you do not know who I am, let me take a moment to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Angela Chester. I'm a pastoral counselor and Christian empowerment coach in the beautiful cities of downtown Long Beach, as well as in Hampton, Virginia. So that's right, I can help you with things not only dealing with your spiritual development, with things dealing with mental health, anxiety, depression, PTSD, uh, grief counseling, premarital counseling, and so on and so forth. I absolutely love what I do, and I feel called and blessed to do those things. I am a best-selling author. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a cancer survivor. I am the host of Modern Living with Dr. Angela that you can find on iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spreaker, several platforms. And thank you to those of you who tune in to listen to Daily Spark with Dr. Angela on 99.1 FM Atlanta. We are starting a new season and we are so excited because you have tuned in. If you are watching this on uh, YouTube or Periscope or Twitter, Roku or on Apple TV, the platform doesn't matter. Thank you so much for joining me. If you would like to know more about me, simply visit DrAngelaChester.com, DrAngelaChester.com. So let's go on and get started. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, hey, how are you? Hello to everyone who just came in the room. Now you guys know what I say. We're going to take care of a few things. And those few things are one. You see those little three dots down there somewhere? I always call them my little Perry ushers. If you have not shared this out with your community, please take a moment to share it with your community. Hello from the Ukraine. Be sure to share this out to your community. If you are not following me, please do me a favor and make sure that you follow me. So should we get disconnected, I will um, populate there in your available videos and you'll be able to go back and watch the replay. So let's get started. What are we talking about today? As we know, we ended 2017 blessing our husbands, taking care of our men folk, as I call them, and making sure that they are covered in the world in the word before we started 2018. So we are now covering our women. We are covering ourselves. Hello, 242. Thank you for sharing your first day on Periscope with me. Thank you so much for that. I hope you are having a great day. No, we don't do those things here. So we are now taking care of our women. So that means that we are praying for wives. We are praying for fiancés. We are praying for wives-to-be. So who would those people be? We're praying for ourselves, our sisters, our mothers, our aunts, our cousins. If you know a woman that wants to be in a marriage, you are praying for her. So let's go on and get started. The first scripture that we are looking at today is Mark 12 30. Mark chapter 12 verse 30. Now you guys know that I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. However, you can always choose the translation that you or the version that you like best. There's the King James Version and then there are um, the, the NIV, the New International Version, but then there's also uh, translations like the New Living Translation. It doesn't matter which Bible you're reading out of. I just want you to be comfortable. So we're looking at Mark chapter 12 verse 30. And it reads, verse 
third day. Here we go. And you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. Let's read that one more time. Here we go. And you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind, and all of your strength. So I think that this particular scripture makes it very explicit in how we are supposed to love the Lord. We're not supposed to do it halfway, right? We're not supposed to do it when we feel like it or um, we're only going to get 50%. We're told that we're supposed to give 100%, even 110% at work. So why aren't we going to give the same amount to the Lord? Now, if we back up just a little bit and we read verse 29, it says, Jesus replied. Now, if you're reading in a um, Bible that has red letters, you already know that Jesus is speaking, but perhaps you didn't know what the those red letters were. So Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your mind and all of your strength. The second one is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than this. So we are talking about love. So let's turn one more time. We're going to go to Deuteronomy. And that is in the Old Testament. So we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 29. So we are going to the New Testament. If you're unfamiliar, then of course you know how it goes. You're talking about Genesis. Then we're looking at Exodus. We're looking at Le Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy. So we're looking at Deuteronomy 4, 29. And it reads, From there... You will search again for the Lord your God. And if you search for him with all your heart and soul, you will find him. Let's read it again. From there, you will search again for the Lord your God. And if you search for him with all of your heart and soul, you will find him. So when we go before the Lord, when we are looking to spend time with the Lord, how are we supposed to go? We are told in the Old Testament. So we have been given this directive. We've been given this instruction from the very beginning. It also tells us in the New Testament that we are supposed to do the exact same thing. Why is that correlation important? Because many times um, the Christians or the uh, Messianic Jews, the Jews that believe that Jesus is the Christ, um, they needed to be reminded. They needed to be shown how this was coming to fruition. So here's the Old Testament reference, and let's take it forward and say, here you are again. We're not supposed to depart from these ways, but instead continue to um, carry it forward. So how are we supposed to search for the Lord? We are supposed to search for the Lord with all of our heart and all of our soul. So that is with our very being. We understand now that we are spirit beings that we are supposed to connect with the Lord with all that we are as opposed with just our minds it's not always a logical point of view as some people would say as to why we want to speak with God but it's also an emotional point of view that we want to connect with God we are supposed to praise we are supposed to be with him we are supposed to commune with him and sometimes it's not about what's in your head it's about what's in your heart that when we connect with him on all levels we are able to make the connectivity that we are truly supposed to have with our Savior. So let's go to Proverbs 3. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 3. Hello, hello, hello. I'm sorry I didn't see your name, but thank you for sharing your first day on Periscope here with me. We're looking at Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your paths. So who is the he that they're talking about in this case? The Lord, Lord, our God, our Savior, our Creator. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Because sometimes we get it wrong. I mean, let's just be truthful. We're human, so sometimes we're going to get it wrong. Seek his will. Seek the Lord's will. Seek God's will in all that you do. And the Lord, God, will not 
will direct your path. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. So sometimes if we're trying to do it in our own understanding and you start to get really, really frustrated and you, you can't seem to make heads or tails of what's going on, it's probably because you're trying to do it in your own power. It's probably because you're trying to do it with your own understanding as opposed to taking it to the Lord first and making sure is this what I'm supposed to be doing in the first place. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for sharing your first day on Periscope with me. Welcome to the community. So if we understand now that we are supposed to give our ideas, remember we prayed for our husbands and in praying for our husbands, we said we wanted our husbands to submit their schedules to the Lord, that we wanted them to take everything before the Lord, before they did anything when it comes to business or even dealings with our family. This is the same thing. This is the same thing that's true for us wives. This is the same thing that's true for you too, ladies, is that we are supposed to seek God's understanding first and foremost. We have one more and then we are going to pray and that is John 15, John 15 verse 10. So we are going back to the New Testament and we're looking at John chapter 15 verse 10. Now, for many of you, you see that this is all red letters. So this is Jesus really teaching. He is really, really, really sharing. If you go back to verse 14, you see that he's sharing a lot there. So that gives you um, a moment of understanding that the Lord is really, really trying to um, impart his wisdom upon those that have ears to hear. As long as we are listening for the Lord, then we are able to better understand. So we're at John 15 verse 10 and it reads, when you obey me, you remain in my love just as I obey my father and remain in his love. So that helps us understand that scripture that says that we are supposed to love each other as Christ loves the church. Sometimes people don't understand, well, what's the big brouhaha about that? Well, Christ loving the church and we're supposed to do this just, this reiterates the relationship that we are supposed to have. So if you were having some wonders or some doubts about who this guy Jesus is and how was he able to love or how was he able to do, how was he able to be, he gives you a certain answer here. When you obey me, you remain in my love just as I obey my father and remain in his love. So the ultimate love comes from God. So each time we are doing something in this love and this example of love we are trying to be a walking living example of God's love to another person yes. God has done so much for us he shares with us he gives to us he explains to us he imparts his wisdom to us and if we in turn are willing to try to see the Christ in someone else if we are willing to see God in the other person that we're dealing with and we're talking about wives here so if we're able to see the God God in our husband or in our husband to be, then it changes how we're able to interact with that person. Stop looking or loving with your human heart, but if you start to see or love with God's eyes, with God's heart, then it changes your paradigm. So what are we about to pray for now when we're talking about our wives? We are about to pray that she will continue to love for the Lord God, that she will love the Lord God with all of her heart that she will love with all of her soul, with all of her mind, with all of her strength, that's right, and that she will seek him first yes, yes. with all of her might, with all of her reverence, that she will be willing to go before the Lord in that fear and reverence that we have for God, that she will be ever obedient to him, not to what the world is pulling on her to do or what her understanding of what it means, but that she will seek scripture, that she will seek that direction, that she will seek that, that um, influence from the Lord as far as what she is supposed to do. But most importantly, that she will not forget to abide in God's love, that that is where we find our refuge, that many times, in our day to day, we will become frustrated. We will become sidetracked. But if she's able to go back and find that refuge in God's love, then she will be made whole again, that she will be made to understand what her life purpose is and be able to carry out her day's task. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with a heart of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for the gift of a brand new year. Lord, we thank you for the gift of our life. 
Lord, we thank you for the gift of woman, that you saw that in your perfect wisdom that man should not be alone. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your most precious and holy love, your all-encompassing love, your all-giving love. Lord, we ask that as we go about our day and even before we start, that we will seek you first in all things. That we will seek to not only receive your love, but to be able to share your love to others. Lord, we ask that you will, that you will give us your love in our minds, in our hearts, in our soul, and in our spirit. That as we move about our day, that our light will continue to shine but it will shine even brighter because of you. Lord, we ask that as we encounter those who are unfamiliar with you, that our cells will fall off and that your love will be shown even brighter to them, that we can be a walking example of how much you love your very creation and that they will be able to see the God in us. We ask for this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. So we are now going to talk about or look at John chapter 13. So let's turn to John chapter 13. We're already at verse 15. So we're just going to flip back a page. We're looking at John chapter 13 and we're going to read verses 34 through 35. John 13, 34 through 35. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as i have loved you you should love each other verse 35 your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples mm -hmm. you know what i love about this particular translation how many times does he say love each other in just the first verse he he says it twice mm -hmm. in the in verse 34 so now i am giving you a new commandment I'm giving you a new commandment. Why is that important for him to make that statement? Because, it, again, when we look at the culture, we already know that we have the Ten Commandments. Old Testament says we are supposed to do these ten things, right? So we know that if I just say, hey, you're supposed to do something, for those of you who are logical, you'll say, well, what is the law? What does la ley say? The law says that I only have to do these things. So I don't have to do this new thing that you're telling me to do. Ah, but when you put it in the context of I give you a new commandment, now it becomes mandatory. It is no longer optional, right? So what is our new commandment? Love each other. Love one another, right? Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. So that halfway, like we said before, that halfway, that's not going to work. Jesus loves you enough to lay down his very life. We have to work and strive every day to love as wives or even as fiancés. Our goal is to be able to love our spouses in a way that is just oozing all over them, right? That we are just going to love that man up one side and down the other. As the phrase goes, to the moon and back, right? So that is what we are striving to do. Let's move on to Philippians we're looking at Philippians. Now, if you're not sure where that is, if you start at Revelation and kind of work your way back. Hello, Malik. Thank you so much for sharing your first day on Periscope with us. Welcome to the community. Welcome, welcome. We're looking at Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Thank you so much for, so for those hearts. I appreciate that. Philippians 2, 1 through 3. And it reads, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and sympathetic? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another and working together with one heart and purpose. Don't be foolish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. 
Let's read that one more time. So there is unity through humility. Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? So let's, let's kind of break that down a little bit. Is there any encouragement from belonging in Christ? Is there any empowerment? Is there any enlightenment in belonging to this thing called the body of Christ? Belonging to the church is the question. Is there any comfort? Is there any solace from his love? Is there any healing ability? How, how is this going to make me better? Any fellowship together in the spirit? When I come together in this fellowship that you're telling me that we're supposed to be like minded people are supposed to fellowship together in this gathering together of minds is is the spirit going to be there and how do I know if the spirit is going to be there what is the result of this gathering and being with the spirit are your hearts tender and sympathetic does my heart need to be soft does my heart need to be able to receive do i need to be a better people person do i need to be able to look at my brother and sister and be able to see that they may be in pain that they may be hurting and if i am what does that mean for me because we know that many people have a bitter heart. Many people have a hardening of the heart. They've been through a really tough life and they've learned how to survive as opposed to really how to reach out and love others. Hello, uh, 101. Thank you so much for sharing your first day on Periscope with me here. Verse 2. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Let's pause there. Wholeheartedly. Right. So again, we're given that directive. This is not a 50 50. This is not a 90 percent. This is a hundred percent, a hundred and ten percent with each other, loving one another. There we go again. We get that directive, loving one another and working together with one heart and purpose, one heart and purpose purpose why is that important because it is hard if you have two people trying to do their own thing how do we know that remember when we used to do kind of like fairs or you would do family reunion or you would have um a, a business outing and you did the th three legged race it's hard if i'm trying to go and you stand and still. The purpose is to work together to get to the end result. So if you're working against each other, then you're going to fall apart. You're going to be unsuccessful and you may even end up injured. But if you work together and you say, okay, if my left leg is bound to your right leg, we can't say left, right, because that means two different things. But if we say one is going to be mine and then one is going to be ours, then it's a totally different perception. Do you understand where I'm going with this? So together, 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 because you can't concentrate on your individual leg. Neither one of you can concentrate because that's not how you're bound. You're bound together in the middle, and that's the leg that gives you twice the power. So it's together, together, together. The other leg, the independent leg, is just what you need to fall back on to give you more power to be thrust together forward. Does that make sense to yes. everyone? Okay, so it is so important that we understand that we are of one heart and of one purpose, and especially if we are talking about the church. If you are a Christian wife, then we have to understand that one heart and one purpose means what are we going to do as a family? What are we going to do as a unit? What are we going to do as a Christian couple? And what do we do as a Christian family? Amen? Amen. So let's turn to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So from where you are, you're going to go to the left side of your Bible and turn back a few chapters. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. 1 Corinthians 13, 7. And it reads, Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Let's read it again. Love never gives up. It never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Now, a little side note. Now, some people like to call 1 Corinthians 
13, the love is patient scripture, right? We're most familiar with this when it comes to weddings because we're trying to remind this engaged couple right before they tie the knot from a legal perspective that love is what is most important. Why do we know that? Because Jesus keeps telling us to love one another. Yeah. That love is all of these particular things. For those of you who are unfamiliar, real quick, I'm going to read through. You ready? Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable. It keeps no record of when it has been wronged. It I'm sorry, it is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever, but prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will all disappear. Now, we only we know only a little, and even the gift of prophecy reveals little. But when we end the comes, these special gifts will disappear. So we know that there may be these things that come along, right? We understand that life is going to bring a certain revelation. So remember the speaking in tongues? When we speak in tongues, it is what we refer to as our... Our prayer language we understand on the day of Pentecost that people that did not speak a certain language was able to speak a certain language to minister to others so if I don't speak German and all of a sudden Holy Spirit allowed me to speak in German I would then be able to minister to those in their native tongue and they would know wait a minute she's American but she speaks my language Wow that is amazing that means that there's something special going on so when we look at that from their cultural point of view that they were able to speak in languages of people that they were told not necessarily to even associate with then it was wow this is really divine impartation so when we go down to verse 13 and it says there are three things that will endure faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love so there are things again that will come and go in your life we don't know always what we're praying for when we pray in the spirit we just know that we are supposed to do it and whatever God chooses to manifest we know that wow that must have been what I was praying about or someone is healed or someone calls you up and says I just missed the accident by like just woo then you know that you were praying for that angel to make a way for your loved ones so on and so forth for. So we know that those things will come and those things will go, but love will always be there. Love is what we must always strive for. So what are we about to pray for now? That we as wives, that we as women, that we will grow and continue to love each other, that we will esteem each other, that we will understand that our sisters in Christ are just as special as we are, and that we will bring peace and joy and hope to our families, and that we will continue to walk in faith. Let's prepare our hearts for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your love and of your example in Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that as I lift our ladies up before you, Lord, that you will continue to bless them with your wisdom, but you will remind and touch their hearts as well as their heads about your love, your all-encompassing love. Lord, remind us that because of your love that we are able to do and be, that we are able to walk the path that you have placed us upon, not under our own strength, but with your encouragement and with your wisdom. Lord, we ask that as we raise our families, that we will raise our families to appreciate and expect your love, your joy, and your peace. Lord, we ask that as we go about our days, that we will be better people because we are turning to you, because we are reminded in your scriptures of how we are supposed to behave, how we are supposed to understand how our lives are supposed to act, that we understand that if we simply turn to your scripture, that the directions are already there. Mm -hmm. Lord, we ask that when those times come in, they're really hard, Lord, sometimes 
it's hard to love someone else, that their actions are so difficult for us to move past. Lord, we ask that we will fade away and that you will rise up in us. Lord, we ask that in those times where it's difficult to say something with a smooth tongue as opposed to with a forked tongue, Lord, we ask that your love will come just gushing out, that your love will overtake our tongue and that our human tongue will fall away. Lord, when we see someone that needs your love, that our cells will fall away and we will wrap your arms around them and remind them that you are love. Lord, we ask that when we are simply troubled during the day-to-day -day of our lives, of our human existence, that we will be able to fall to our knees and ask you to send Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit will whisper in our ears and remind us that we are loved. That it doesn't matter what's going on, that you have us in the palm of your hand and that you love us. And because of that love, that you will always take care of us. Lord, thank you for the gift of your love. And may we walk in your love each and every day. Yes. Amen. 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 Now we are going to turn, we only have one scripture for this particular one that we're going to look at, and we are looking at Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. And it reads, Happy are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates, waiting for me outside my home. One more time. Happy are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates, waiting for me outside my home. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about wisdom. Now I'm going to read very quickly through this to help kind of give you some context. We are looking at Proverbs chapter 8. So the verse that we're looking at in particular is verse 34, but I'm actually going to start at Proverbs chapter 8. I'm going to kind of jump down, okay? So here we go. Verse 1, listen as wisdom calls out. Hear as understanding raises her voice. She stands on the hilltop and at the crossroads. At the entrance to the city, at the city gates, she cries aloud, I call to you, to all of you. I am raising my voice to all people. How naive you are. Let me give you common sense. Oh, foolish ones, let me give you understanding. Listen to me, for I have excellent things to tell you. Everything I say is right, for I speak the truth and hate every kind of deception. My advice is wholesome and good. There is nothing crooked or twisted in it. My words are plain to anyone with understanding, clear to those who want to learn. Choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge over pure gold, for wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare to it. I, wisdom, thank you for my hearts, I, wisdom, live together with good judgment. I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. All who fear the Lord will hate evil. This is why I hate pride, arrogance, corruption, and perversive speech. Good advice and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. Because of me, kings reign and rulers make just laws. Rulers lead with my help and nobles make righteous judgments. I love all who love me. Those who search for me will surely find me. Unending riches, honor, wealth, and justice are mine to distribute. My gifts are better than the purest gold. My wages better than sterling silver. I walk in righteousness and paths of justice. Those who love me inherit wealth, for I fill their treasures. 22. The Lord formed me from the beginning before he created anything else. I was appointed in ages past at the very first before the earth began. I was born before the oceans were created, before the springs bubbled forth from the water, before the mountains and the hills were formed. I was born before he had made the earth and the fields and the first handfuls of soil. I was there when he established the heavens, when he drew the horizons on the 
the ocean. I was there when he set the clouds above and he established the deep foundations of the earth. I was there when he set the limits of the sea so that they would not spread beyond their boundaries. Mm -hmm. And when we marked off the earth's foundation, I was the architect by his side. I was his constant delight, rejoicing always in his presence and how happy I was with what he created. He made the world wide and all the human family. So my children, listen to me, for happy are all who follow my ways. Listen to my counsel and be wise, don't ignore it. Happy are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at the gates, waiting for me outside my home. I don't know about you, I'm fired up. <laughs> ready to roll you know it is one of those scriptures and i tell you if you don't read anything else you read the book of proverbs right when you read all of that this is wisdom calling to those who want to hear wisdom is saying do you understand how long i have been here i have been here since the beginning of time i have been rolling with the lord all of this time i have been right there do you understand when he was making in all of these things God didn't just haphazardly make these things he made these things with wisdom he made these things with power wisdom isn't something that just poof just kind of came along I have been here I've been here so if you will open your ears you can hear I am right here right now I am standing with Jesus right here right now I've never been lost. I've never been someplace else where you couldn't find me. If you would open your eyes, you can see that I am standing next to Jesus the Christ right now. Wisdom is telling you, listen, open your eyes and see what I have set before you. I have done all of these things. The wisdom, let's just think about the ocean, all right? Let's just think about the seas. That the seas know to go only... <coughs> that far and then to come back but don't go back too far but then go forward again come on now we can't do that we can't do that we can't do that they, they yeah, thank you yes we can't do that in our own understanding we can't do that in our own knowledge we can't do that in our own power so when we look at this happy are those who listen to me yes. watching for me daily at my gates waiting for me outside my home so what is the context there the context there, now when we think about old cities, all old cities had a gate. There's always a gate. There's always a door, right? So that is to keep the things that you don't want to come in out. Sometimes a door is there to separate one room from another room. It's to separate purpose from purpose, separate plan from plan. So if we understand that there is a gate, that there is a gate right here, and we are trying to keep in certain things and to keep out certain things then those who want to have interest entrance will be patient because the guard will ask what is your purpose what is it that you want here what are your intentions my intentions are to learn i seek wisdom i want to come on the inside so that my wisdom may grow you may enter in once you're in though there are more gates there are more doors behold that's why jesus said i stand at the door and knock i stand at the gate and i knock do you want me to come in i have what you want do you allow me to come into your domicile? Do you allow me to come into your dwelling place? Do you allow me to come into your heart, into your spirit? Do you allow me to come into where you and your family are? Yes. Great. Now, in this context as well, I want you to think about your house of worship. There used to be a time where, thank you, there used to be a time where the doors of your houses of worship were always unlocked, yes, but yes. the doors were closed. When the doors were open, you knew that all may come in because the doors of the church are now open. That's why we still kind of say that at yeah. the end of church. The doors are now open. So come in. Now, when we think about this from a personal perspective, a lot of times when we think about Romeo and Juliet, right? So Romeo then climbed over. She's sitting there trying to wait for Juliet to come out into the balcony. And Juliet's inside. 
She has to come out. She has to open the door. She has to open the window so that her betrothed can speak to her because he can't get to her on the other side of the door. So when we do this, what type of love are we exposing ourselves to? What type of person are we exposing ourselves to? Are we exposing, are we opening the door? Are we opening the gate to the proper type of relationship? Are we opening the door and the gate to the proper person that's going to have a direct influence on into our lives? So when we look at this at the various ways that we have doors or gates or windows or or um, uh, parts partitions in our lives we've partitioned ourselves off for what reason when we open that partition are we sure we are allowing the proper things in when we are seeking the wisdom of the lord in all things then we will know when to open our doors and when to keep our doors shut that we will open the windows the lord says i will open the windows of heaven and pour down a blessing upon you so but what do we have to do we also have to open our windows so that that blessing may be received and that it may cover our floors not just our floor that has an s on it that means i'm gonna cover more than one floor that means that that is abundance overflowing that it doesn't fill just one room but it fills the whole house so we need to really and truly look at the words that are used when we're looking at scripture as you can tell they give me a little fired up right so it's like oh my goodness this is awesome because i'm happy to be standing at the gates waiting for the door to be open so that i can receive this wisdom so what are we about to pray for now we are going to pray that each and every one of us ladies i'm lifting us up today right that we will have personal prayer time with the lord that we will have worship time with the lord we will have devotion time with the lord and each and every time we do that we understand that we are sitting outside of the gates and when the Lord opens that door for us, that we are able to come in and just praise and be one with our creator. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your wisdom. Lord, thank you so much that wisdom calls out to us each and every day and that we are able to hear your wisdom. Lord, we ask that if we are ever at the wrong gate at the wrong time, that Holy Spirit will whisper to us and that we will be able to hear and we will move as you say move lord thank you for our time to that we can spend to worship you that we can spend time to praise you and to thank you not only for the gift of your love but for the gift of your wisdom of your discernment of just being able to spend time with the creator we as the created lord we thank you for our ability to spend devotion time with you we know that in many countries in many lands it is still a time of trouble it is still a time where Christians have to hide their worship and their praise that their very lives may be at risk Lord I thank you for our ability here to be able to praise you and to seek you and to share your love and your wisdom with with others without being afraid that we may lose our lives the freedom that you have given us to move in your love and about your great country simply because you have opened the door lord may each and every one of us the next time we see a door that we see it in a different way and understand that the meaning of a door or a gate or a window is so much more than it just appears in our day-to-day -day life Lord, where we never miss out on the symbolism that you show us each and every day of how you are there for us. Yes. The favor that we have when we open that door and that door is not locked or shut or closed, that we can open it and move through freely. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you. We marvel in who you are. Lord, we revel in who you are, and we thank you that you have shared your grace, your mercy, and your love and wisdom with us today. Lord, we praise you, we honor you, and we forever walk in your gratitude. Yes. We ask for this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Amen. Well, we had a lot of people come into the room, so I just want to take a moment to reintroduce myself. I'm about to give you our last few scriptures of the day, and that is that my name is Dr. Angela Chester. I'm a pastoral counselor and Christian empowerment coach in the beautiful cities of downtown Long Beach, as well as in Hampton, Virginia. So as a pastoral counselor, I can assist you with things not only dealing with your mental health, like PTSD, anxiety, so on and so forth, but also with spiritual development. I absolutely love what I can do, as you could probably tell. So I believe that one of the things that I am supposed to do in walking in my purpose is to share the revelations that God has given me to share and to teach this beautiful thing called our Bible, our, our holy scripture here, so that you can better understand and take the scripture with you and see how it applies to our day-to-day -day lives. That is not something that's just limited to our worship time, be it that you Sabbath on Saturday or on Sunday, but something that we can take with us each and every day. I'm a best-selling author. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a cancer survivor. I'm, I'm the host of so many different things. And if you want to know more about me, you can always visit Dr. AngelaChester.com. But what I want to do today is make sure that you understand that we are covered by this word. If we simply know where to look, that we are able to pray for not only ourselves, but for each other and cover us in the word of the Lord. So we are now going to look at Hebrews chapter 13. We are looking at Hebrews. That's one of those books that if you, again, you started the book of Revelation, you go all the way to the back of your Bible and kind of move a couple of chapters forward, you will find it. We're looking at Hebrew chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. And I'm reading in the New Living Translation. And it reads, stay away from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. Let's keep going a little bit, right? Verse six. That is why we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? That's like a, uh oh, come on. Yeah, I like that. So let's read it one more time. Five and six. Stay away from the love of money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never, excuse me, I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. That is why we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? What a wonderful reminder that we need to be satisfied with what we have. Now, there's a difference with being complacent and being satisfied. Many times when you are complacent, you can become stuck. Meaning that you just do what you need to do to get by and it's kind of like a mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? But when you are satisfied, you are happy with what you have. And you are grateful for what you have, but you also have an understanding that should there come more, amen for that, that it will, it shall come if it shall come. But if it does not, you are okay with that as well. Now, Sometimes we look at this and we say, stay away from the love of money. Okay. And some of your Bibles may even say um, that there's something with being rich, that we should not love this thing called rich, or that we um, should be very careful about um, idolatry. Again, depending on which translation that you are reading. Why do they say that? Because we also need to remember, again, that Christianity, our understanding of Christianity, being a Messianic Jew, this is still something that is fairly new. So we're still competing with, or we're still trying to remind people that their pagan ways are not the ways in which they are supposed to conduct or handle themselves. So we're not supposed to praise the the almighty dollar or whatever your currency is, that we're not supposed to look to this money that we can hold in our hands and say that this is our God, that with this currency that I am therefore able to move and be and have all power and wisdom. It is not the currency that allows you to do that, but instead it is the knowledge, the wisdom, the power, the favor of the Lord that allows you to do that. Yes. That even without this much money and you only have this much money, 
money, you are still able to be satisfied, to be taken care of, and to be okay because the Lord has made the way. Amen? Amen. So if you read it again, I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. People can't say that because sometimes we fall short. Our intentions were great. We, I, I said I was going to have $1,000. I don't. I have $999, but the bill is 1000 You still show it right? But the Lord says, I will never forsake you. I will never fail you. This is why we can say with confidence, with confidence. That's one of those, how David used to say, surely the Lord. This is one of those things. You can say with confidence that the Lord is my helper. So I will not be afraid. The, the elders used to tell us either you're going to, either you're going to pray or you're going to worry, right? You're going to either give it to the Lord or you're going to sit there and worry about it. What are you going to do? Well, the Lord is my helper, so I will not be afraid. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to trouble. I'm not going to contemplate. I'm not going to roll it over. I'm not going to lose any sleep because what can these mere mortals do to me? Absolutely nothing, as the song says. Absolutely nothing. Because we know that we have the covering of the Lord. So we are um, now going to turn to 1 Timothy. So where you are presently in Hebrews, you're just going to turn back a few pages. So don't go too far, okay? So um, if you look at it where you are in, in um, Hebrews, um, 2 Timothy is right before that and 1 Timothy is right before that. So don't turn too quickly. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. And it reads, so if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Very simple. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Now, with this, if, if, we, if we have a true understanding of what this means, then food is a twofold, right? Clothing is a twofold. So, or like I, as I like to say, a twofer, right? <laughs> so if we have enough physical food... And spiritual food, if we have enough physical clothing and spiritual clothing, let us be content. Why? Because we are covered. We are taken care of. The Lord is going to provide us with physical food for our bodies, yeah. but he's also provided us with spiritual food. He has left behind his holy word so that we are able to speak spiritually. Clothing, we will be clothed with Holy Spirit. We will be clothed in his word. We will be covered. We will be able to put on the armor of his holy word and be able to take care of all of our spiritual needs. We will not be walking around spiritually naked. We will also have clothing to put on our physical bodies so that we will not break any laws and not have any clothes on. So let us be content with that. We're covered, literally, not didn't mean that for there to be a pun there, but we are going to be covered. Let's now turn to Matthew chapter 6. And Matthew is the very first book when we learn of the New Testament. We go Matthew, Mark, Luke. Oh, Matthew. There you go. So we're doing Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 33. Now, this is another um another scripture that Jesus is talking. Chapter 6, Jesus is teaching about giving to the needy. So we are looking at Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Here we go. So don't worry about having enough food or drink or clothing. Why be like the pagans who are so deeply concerned about these things? Your heavenly father already knows all of your needs and he will give you all you need from day to day. If you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. Let me read it one more time. So don't worry about having enough food or drink or clothing. Why be like the pagans who are already so deeply concerned about these things? Your heavenly father already knows all of your needs and he will give you all you need from day to day. 
if you live for him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. And I love how verse 34 starts off and says, so don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. You only have to worry about today. You only have to, and he doesn't mean worry like trouble, like concern, like freaking out and end up having a panic attack. He means the worry of what are the items on my list that I need to accomplish? What is the, the line item? What do you need to do? I need to get milk. I need to feed the chickens. I need to go to the store. I need to go to the doctor. Those types of things. What are your concerns for the day? So if we understand that we don't have to worry about these particular things, if you're worried about, if you're fashionable that day, that's your problem. Because he says, I will give you clothes. That's a materialistic thing. That's something that the world has created, right? So if the world has created that, then there's only a certain amount that we need to be worried about. You have on clothes. You have on clean clothes. Your clothes don't have any holes in them. They're not tattered. They're, they're, um, uh, you don't smell or any of those things. Great. You're clean. You're able to go about the day. Now, if you worried about if it's designer or not, again, that's the materialistic portion. And that's the portion that we, that we don't want to, um, start to flood our lives. We don't want it to be where we're not dressing or we're not existing for the kingdom. We are existing for man. We are existing because we're trying to impress those that are around us. Well, that is our last scripture for this particular portion. So what are we praying for, for this area? We are praying that we as women, that we will be content, that we will have a joy that surpasses the joy that the world can give to us, that we will not be envious of other people, and that we will be thankful to God for our daily provisions, providing for us, providing for our spouse, providing for our children, and that we will trust that we will have this all-encompassing, that confidence, that trust that God really and truly is taking care of us and that we will be okay. We are praying that we will first seek the kingdom of God in all things and that we will not become victims of materialism. Oh, thank you so much. Um, is it Carrie? Thank you so much for that, Carrie. I appreciate that. And that materialism will be far from our hearts. Now, please understand, if you are able to buy something that costs more as opposed to something that costs less, and you have the means to do that, that is okay. But if you do not have the means and you are only trying to purchase the more instead of the less to impress somebody else, that is not what the Lord wants us to do, okay? Because so many times people get confused with that. So rich is evil, not by any means, because God says that he is going to bless us with abundance, that he is going to bless us with prosperity. And in being prosperous, it is more than just the money that we have in our pockets, but it is the wisdom that we have. It is the love that we have. It is the favor that we have in the world. So when we have this, that we don't become um, in our in our humanness, that we just don't concentrate on the tangible things, but that we understand that our success and that our prosperity is so much more than the things that we can put our fingers on. It's Okay, our writing. So let's prepare our hearts and minds to pray one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word, for your teachings. Lord, as I lift our women up today, Lord, I ask that we will be women of joy, that we will be women of contentment, that we will be women of thankfulness. Lord, that we will be able to raise our heads, our hearts, our hands to you and say, thank you, Lord, for the gift of all that I have. That because of you, because of the kingdom, that we are able to walk in this abundance. Lord, I ask that as we raise our families, that we will be able to teach our children about the trappings of materialism, that we will be able to teach our children about the trappings that the world has before them. Lord, we ask that as we go about our days, that we will be able to teach our children that because of you, that you provide all things yes. and that we trust first in your ability and not in our own. Lord, we ask that as we prepare for this new year of 2018, that our old ways will fall off and that our new ways will be more like you. Lord, we ask that as we remake ourselves and we teach our families to go from point A to point B, 
that we will first seek your wisdom, that we will have eyes to see in new ways what your word reveals to us, that we will have ears to hear and receive new revelation of what your word says to us, that we will have a new heart to see what your love brings to us in our day to day. Lord, we thank you for your gift of our life and that we may be a shining light for others. Lord, continue to love us, continue to direct us, and we thank you for all that we have. We ask for this in your most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, everyone, for joining me today for our Wednesday in the Word, because we are in the Word on Wednesdays. For those of you who like some homework, for those of you who like some homework, I want you to read Luke chapter 11, and I want you to start with verse 38. We are looking at Luke 11, and I want you to read starting with verse 38. And if you have any questions, you can always visit Dr. Angela Chester. Click on our contact tab and say, hey, Dr. Angela, I read that scripture, and I want to know more. I want to go a little bit deeper, and I will go deeper. We are all out of time for today, but there's nothing wrong with having something that can tide us over until we have our Sunday worship. Thank you, guys. I hope that you are having a blessed 2018, that you are safe and sound, and all of your family members have been able to share in the, in the love and the prosperity of the new year as we have gotten only a few days in. I wish nothing but peace and blessings to everyone. May you continue to walk in God's grace and mercy. Be blessed, my friend. Thank you so much. Just in case you are unfamiliar with the schedule, one more time. Here we go. Monday motivation. On Mondays, we are in the Word on Wednesdays. And Friday, we have our 5 at 5. I will see you guys back in a few days. Have a blessed day, everyone. Bye-bye.